Now, when I started all of this with MTV's Washington Heights television show, I didn't intend to make it out as this. I'm turning it into a review where the original was Saving My Hood videos, the first two were about me identifying and ranting about what this show fails to get right about the hood and how crappy the actors are and all this shit. Where now it's really about me basically focusing on what they do right with the show and what they do wrong with the show in terms of plot, storyline, character development. It really has become a review more than anything else. And I feel like that's a necessary step for me in terms of making these videos since I'm not going to get pissed off and rant about how they're not representing people from my hood correctly because that's a problem that really could only be summarized in one video. One thing they did get right with this episode is that no longer are we focusing on the problems of excessive rooftop party scenarios and dumb love triangles. Although, next episode, based on the teasers, will have this problem. So, nonetheless, shout out to Kenny. He's going to be my final shout out, period. I don't want to hear you niggas bitch unless there's a legitimate reason for me to shout you out. He's the final one. You're the man, Kenny. But besides this, besides all this bullshit, let me tell you some things about this episode. First and foremost, again, they're continuing to paint Ludwin out to be the badass of this series that all the bitches want him and that he's awesome. Apparently his hobby of being a skater was to get him off being a hood nigga as he was when it came to being a child. I really doubt that Ludwin would ever be a hood nigga. It's hard to picture Ludwin as anything other than a bitch nigga. I almost barfed at that one scene near the beginning where I got to see his crusty ass soles, the soles of his feet. I mean, that shit almost made me puke. And, yeah. And it's really strange to see that from episode 2 all the way to episode 4, Frankie's been trying to give Ludwin a hard on with her socks. By wearing socks. That's. Well, I guess when your external body is made of pure cellulite, cellulite, uh, what's wrong with me today? What's wrong with me every day? I wouldn't blame you for trying a strange, unorthodox method like that, especially if you think it's getting you anywhere, which it's not, since every other scene is her basically being told, what's going on with you and Ludwin? And then she's saying, oh, well, I'm trying to get with him, but he has this problem, this problem, and that problem. Some things where I feel like this show was ultimately a lot more mediocre than the second and third episodes. Nobody saved this episode. They really had to deliver. In general, I think that Audubon is definitely stepping up in terms of being a legit main character as even though he's trying to be this whack ass wannabe B banga and I feel like every time he gets on stage that he's gonna say you already know I do this for the Bronx for real or you already know I'm B banga the Bronx banga I do this for the Bronx for real I feel like he's gonna do that all the time and he's gonna start singing chicks gets to rock but that's not what he's going to do. That's not what his character is about. His raps are mediocre, but the good thing is that he's the only guy that's right now, for this episode, pursuing 
something. It's not just a bunch of other people that are trying to do their own thing. They definitely realize that the Rico subplot isn't really an effective one. It's better to have Rico play the pretty boy that's hitting on girls than him trying to play the reluctant, egotistical, wannabe, pursuing actor. That That's not... That's not going to really bring in the viewers. It's better to use him for the sidelines. That's what kind of character he is, ultimately. And Jimmy, again, is nowhere to be found. What a more exciting... Well, okay, let me take it back a little bit. Because there is a lot of stuff happening in this episode. No more Alexis, so all the scenes where he was basically saving the show for episodes two and three. No, he can't save the show anymore because, yep, he got locked up. We don't see one line from Alexis in this entire episode. We don't get to see his face anymore. We don't get to see his very presence. We don't get to see those good acting scenes where he plays that <laughs> minor role that does legitimize Ludwin. We do find out that he gets one or third years in prison, or ultimately, for the maximum four. Being that he's only 18, a little older than me, I don't think he's going to do all that bad. He'll, he'll survive, he'll survive. I mean, it's not like his anus is going to do any growing in prison. But it's hard to imagine that this guy, Alexis, is a thug nigga anyway. He's skinny, kind of like a stick. And I'm a little bit more intimidating than he is. And I have the intimidation of a 12-year-old girl. What can I do? But moreover, going over some of the other characters, Raina gets a bigger role here because Taddy, one of her sisters or cousin, who's by the way way more attractive than she is, I mean way more attractive, damn, that girl better hit me up. She was pissed that her boyfriend or whatever he's supposed to be, Manny, couldn't hang out in her party because he had stuff to attend to. <clears throat> This ultimately leads in later scenes to them getting into the loudest, most obnoxious Dominican argument. Really, the Spanish moms are what makes this episode. Whether it's Audubon's mom or basically Ludwin's mom on the phone or speaking or almost breaking down because of what's happening with Alexis or Reina's mom. Because that Dominican argument, I don't know what's up with Reina. She is just... She can't control herself when it comes to dealing with other females. She is destructive as all fuck. Because that argument was... I thought it was going to be a repeat of episode one's fight. But that's not what's happening here. I guess you can say the minor characters do play a role here. In saving the show. But this is the last kind of... I don't want to focus on the skateboarding subplot that happens with... Frankie and Ludwin, because ultimately this episode, their relationship is, just like in episodes three, it's not really doing anything, it's just games now, they're playing games with each other, that's a word you hear in the Heights a lot, this guy's playing games with me, this girl is playing games with me, I don't like that, it's, if you try to get laid in the Heights, you better get laid with an easy bitch, because that's kind of what's going to happen. And of course, you, you don't want to get laid with an easy bitch in the heights. Now, and this is kind of another problem I have. Ludwin doesn't need to be a main character anymore. Next episode, they're going to try to put him in another love triangle. Well, they're trying to further this love triangle, apparently going on with the white girl. What's her name? Taylor? 
that's probably not her name. Fuck. I think every white girl's name is Taylor with blonde hair and blue eyes. Or, But he doesn't need to be the main character to show. Autobahn is a better fit for a main character in my eyes. Of course, he doesn't have those relationships because he's basically focused on trying to hit it big. Problem is that Ludwin doesn't have the charisma that Audubon does. The show is being narrated by Audubon because he has the voice and presence to carry himself in that narrator role. Imagine if Ludwin was the one who was doing the narrating. It would be horrible. Imagine him just mumbling with marbles in his mouth about what's happening in the plot. It doesn't fucking matter. It'd be stupid. Audubon needs to have a bigger role. And I'm glad that, if anything, this episode is reinforcing that. Ultimately, this episode was damn near close to reaching the fails of episode one. If not for the fact that they were cutting back on... All this talent bullshit, the Rico angle, reinforcing Audubon, and you, the Spanish mom saved the show. All you abuelitas of the world, I salute you, because you saved this show. For all the abuelitas, this show, this episode would be as bad as episode one. And the reason is because I am getting sick and tired of Ludwin. This episode did not need to happen. We did not learn anything from this episode. You could have just showed the little Spanish mom scene with basically Ludwin. That would have, because the Spanish mom saved the show. The Abuelita saved the fucking show. And you could have also basically just explained, all right, Alexis got in jail. That's it. His whole story arc is resolved for now. None of this shit needs to happen. Because by the end of this, we realize that Ludwin is playing games because he's not confident about being able to get with Frankly. He wants them to be friends. He doesn't want to risk them being anything else. And that's also bullshit because he's probably interested in his other girls like that white bitch. All in all, this is just bullshit. This whole episode... And it's killed in a different way in the first episode. The first episode was just ass because it was a talent show without the talent. This episode is ass because none of this shit needed to really fucking happen. If it wasn't for the Spanish moms, this show would probably be a uh, 3 out of 10 just like the first episode. But this put it in a 5 out of 10. So, there you go. It, it's watchable. Where, like, the second and third episode would probably be a 6 out of 10. All in all, this, is, this show isn't the worst show ever, but... What they fuck up in is... At least it's not American Idol. At least it's not those shows that are unwatchable to rational eyes. But this show is fucking it up. Yes. It is really doing its best to showcase the characters we don't want to see and the storylines we don't really care about. I don't want to see Ludwin's crusty-ass feet, the soles of his feet. That's not my cup of tea. I don't want to see his sock fetish with Frankie. I don't want to see them play games. If I wanted to do that, I would actually hit some of these Spanish girls from the heights up if I wanted to see niggas play games. The only difference is that I fucking hate screenshotting. And I'm going to deal with that a lot when I deal with an, a bitch nowadays. A teenage bitch. Because they do all that screen capping shit. And you got to do screen caps yourself. It's like a court case when you talk to these hoes. No matter if you're trying to hit them up for some sex. If you're just hitting up to talk. That's how it is. But I'm not here to rant about this. To all you Spanish moms, keep doing what you do. Keep lecturing and bitching at your kids because it's entertaining and safe.